Hey, it's Sam from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'll be showing you how I make key lime cake. Today's recipe is, of course, inspired by the ever popular key lime pie. It features three lime infused vanilla cake layers and just this ridiculously amazing, bright, tartly flavored key lime frosting. I think you're going to love it, so let's jump right in. First thing you want to do is get your oven preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, grab yourself a large mixing bowl, and in this, we are going to combine two and two thirds cups of all purpose flour with two cups of granulated sugar, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a half teaspoon of baking soda. And for some nice flavor, we'll be adding a teaspoon of table salt. Let's go ahead and whisk these ingredients together and get everything nicely combined before we move over to adding our butter. Now we're going to be making this cake in the reverse creaming fashion, which I've been using a lot recently. I like it for today's recipe because it's going to give our cake a tighter, almost more dense crumb. The cake's not going to be dry or anything like that, but it's a little bit sturdier than um, a traditionally creamed crumb. And I just thought it worked really well with the cake here today. So if I didn't already say it, this is a half cup of unsalted butter and it's been softened. We're going to add the butter one tablespoon at a time. And you could absolutely make today's recipe in a stand mixer if you prefer, but today I'm just going to be using my electric hand mixer. And I'm going to stir in the butter until it's completely combined. And then I will add my next tablespoon of butter and I'll just repeat until all of the butter's been added. Now I think I said the butter should be completely combined after each addition, but that doesn't mean you can't see it at all. It should just be in really, really fine pieces. You shouldn't have any clumps of butter larger than like the size of a chocolate chip in there. Our last tablespoon of butter. All right, our next ingredient is one fourth cup of a neutral cooking oil. This would be either avocado oil, canola oil, or vegetable oil. I'm using avocado oil these days. I'm going to add that in. And I am also going to be adding some lime zest. You can use key lime zest or regular lime zest for this. You're going to need a tablespoon of zest. For me, this is usually about two limes worth of zest. You're going to need more limes than that if you're using key limes. So I'm going to add the zest in with the oil here. Just adds a nice color and a little bit of nice flavor here. All right, then we'll go ahead and stir in the oil and the zest. All right, and once that's combined, you're going to have this sandy, crumbly looking mixture that's not completely moist and not completely dry. This is how it should look. So if you're here, you're in a good place. We're going to set this aside for a second. And I wanna talk about our key lime juice. We're only going to be using a small amount of key lime juice in the actual cake. Most of it is going to make an appearance in the frosting. In fact, you only need one and a half tablespoons of the key lime juice here. And we're mostly using it to work with our milk to create um, sort of a buttermilk substitute is what I'm going for today, which is why I'm going to be using the technique you'll see in just a minute. Um, I do wanna talk about the lime juice though. I don't recommend a regular lime juice. I recommend either squeezing your own key limes for some reason, I have not been able to find them within like a 30 mile radius in quite some time. So if you can't find that, a good substitute is Key Lime Juice or this Key West Lime Juice. Either one is going to give you a really, a real authentic Key Lime flavor. So that's what I'm using today. So while you can do regular lime zest in the actual cake, I do recommend Key West Lime Juice. It's ideal to use it here, but it's essential to use it in the frosting for the best flavor. All right. so. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure out one and a half tablespoons of this lime juice. And then we're going to add one and a half scant cups of whole milk. So what this means is I'm just going to add enough milk until I hit the one and a half line mark on my measuring cup. And if you've measured with me before, you know you always need to get down to eye level to make sure you're at the right mark. Perfect. I'm going to stir this together. And next we are going to add two large eggs in with our milk, this one. And ideally these should be room temperature, two eggs. And I'm also going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now you'll notice when we make the frosting, I don't include vanilla because it can really bully the key lime flavor, kind of dampen it down a little too much but I do like to add it to the cake layers. It really balances the sweetness and it's not going to overwhelm the frosting like it would if you actually put it in the frosting. So this is a teaspoon of vanilla extract. 
So now we'll whisk everything together until this is nice and uniform and those eggs are broken up. And we'll bring back our cake batter and we're going to gradually stir this into our cake batter until we have a nice uniform batter. And once you're finished with that, I do recommend using your spatula to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl. You just wanna make sure there aren't pockets of thicker or unmixed batter hiding down there. All right, and once this is nice and uniform, we're going to divide our batter into our cake pans. Today's cake we are baking in three eight inch cake pans. And you may be able to see here, I have lightly greased these with flour or greased them with butter and lightly floured them as well and have tapped out the excess flour. I've also lined each of them with a round of parchment paper, which is just going to guarantee that your cakes don't stick. It's such a lifesaver. So we're going to evenly divide the cake batter into our prepared pans. And these will need to bake in the center rack of your 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 26 to 28 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean or with a few moist crumbs. Now while the cakes are cooling or even while they're cooking, you can begin preparing the curd that you're going to need for your frosting. We're gonna to get to that in a second, but I just wanted to mention that after 10 minutes in the cake pans, you are going to want to use a knife to run it around the edges of the cakes to loosen them from the pan and then carefully invert them onto a cooling rack so that they can cool completely. I don't like to let them sit in the pans too long because they can actually end up being a little bit overbaked, which can make them dry. Pan's actually not too hot to handle. But yours might be, so proceed with caution. All right, we will let these cool and let's head over to the stove top where we'll make our curd. Now for the frosting, I'm going to be using the same technique I use for my lemon frosting, except we're doing a key lime version. And this version starts by making a simple and quick curd on the stove top. So the first thing you're going to need to make this curd is two large egg yolks. Just need the yolks, not the whites for this recipe. So I'm just going to separate those out and I will drop them into my saucepan. And I do wanna take a second to talk about the saucepan that you will be using. I lost that one. It is important that you select what is called a non-reactive saucepan. So you want to use a material like ceramic or stainless steel. I'm using stainless steel today because some materials, like if you were to use cast iron, they will react with the acidity from the lime and they will give your end result a really bad metallic taste. So stainless steel is what I recommend. Along with the egg yolks, we'll be adding just two tablespoons of granulated sugar. And then remember our key lime juice from earlier, we're going to be adding another third cup of key lime juice in here and one fourth teaspoon of table salt. I'm going to whisk these ingredients together, break up those egg yolks. Then we're going to add just two tablespoons of unsalted butter. We'll turn our heat to medium low. We're going to cook this until the butter is melted. I do like to whisk constantly. We are making a pretty small amount of curd, so it does need our attention. If you are not whisking it enough, stirring it enough, if you're not watching your heat, you could end up burning it, which would be really bad news. Now, while this is cooking, I also do like to prepare a bowl that I'm going to pour my curd into and have a fine mesh strainer at the ready because we are going to be straining the curd just in case any lumps form, which is pretty common when you're making curd. That way we can weed those out of the final product and have a smooth frosting. So once the butter's melted, we're just going to keep on cooking this, stirring it constantly until the mixture has thickened. If you're not getting anywhere after about five minutes, you can turn up your heat a tiny bit, but I really do recommend staying like just below medium heat at least. I also like to use the back of a spoon to test if the mixture is thick enough. So you can see here, you can still see the spoon through the mixture, so we're not quite there yet. And I'm being constant with my stirring, I'm scraping the bottom of the pot and the sides of the pot because I don't want any of that egg to cook, which can happen. So you'll know this is finished when it's thickened. It's not necessarily leaving distinct trails with the whisk. Let's check with our spoon again. It's starting to bubble as well. You can see it's coated the back of the spoon. There's the trail. Tastes delicious. Actually, it's really sour. Oh, that's tart. So I'm gonna cook this just a couple seconds longer. When the mixture also is starting to gently bubble and the bubbles look thick like this, that's also a good sign you're finished. All right, let's remove this from heat and we are going to immediately pour it through our fine mesh strainer. We're going to help it through a little bit. We wanna strain out any solid bits that may be left behind, which happens. That's fine, that's why we do this step. 
So this curd is going to need to cool completely before you can use it in your frosting. If you want to speed up the process, you can pop it in the refrigerator for a little bit. I also intentionally strained it into a larger glass bowl just because that larger surface area is going to help it cool a little bit faster. Once the curd has cooled completely, we can actually make the frosting, which comes together really quickly. We're going to start with 3 4 cup of softened unsalted butter. Drop that in a large mixing bowl. And we are also going to be adding six ounces of softened cream cheese. So I tried this frosting so many different ways and every time, unanimously, everyone preferred the versions that I made with cream cheese. I wasn't actually sure that I was going to include cream cheese originally just because it does have a distinct flavor, but it really, really works well here in this recipe. So let's cream together the butter and cream cheese until these are smooth and lump free. And then we can gradually start to add our powdered sugar. So I have measured out five cups of powdered sugar, but I find with this recipe, I need a range. I usually aim to use four cups. And then if I feel like it needs to be a little stiffer, I'll add that last cup in or part of that last cup in. So anytime you're making frosting, it's a good idea to add the sugar gradually, stir on low speed. And while the cake does have a nice, more subtle key lime flavor, the actual frosting is where you're really gonna get that nice punch of tart key lime flavor. And that's mostly going to come from our curd here. All right, there's no vanilla extract that goes in this frosting. I found that did not pair really well with the lime flavor. So if you're wondering, where's the vanilla extract? There is none, that's intentional. All right, so now we're going to start adding our curd, but we're going to do this gradually. You'll have about six tablespoons of curd if you have made the recipe as instructed. We're just going to add about a tablespoon at a time. We'll stir on low speed until that's completely combined before adding the next tablespoon. Now, if you find that you have more than six tablespoons of curd, you may have accidentally just not cooked it quite as long as you need to, in which case you are going to want to be careful when you're adding this and keep an eye on the frosting. If it's starting to separate, you are going to want to stop adding the curd. It just might be too wet, unfortunately. I'm going to add that last bit of curd. This is such a brightly flavored, perfectly tart frosting. And before I add that last cup of frosting, I'm just kind of going to look at this, take a look at the consistency, maybe do a quick taste test to decide if I need to add any more sugar or not. I think I'm going to add a little bit more. And we'll fold this in. Now we can decorate our cakes and I'm just going to put the frosting in a large piping bag that I have fitted with a round tip just to make decorating a little bit easier and more uniform. All right, let's go ahead now and decorate our cakes. If your cakes need to be leveled, you can go ahead and do so. I find these typically bake pretty flat, so I'm going to skip leveling them today. We'll aim for a nice even layer here, top with another cake layer. This step is optional, but I do usually like to pause after I do a thin layer on the outside of the cake and then pop it in the freezer for 10 or 15 minutes just to give me a really nice clean outer layer of frosting on the cake. Little time in the freezer just makes applying the frosting a little easier and smoother. All right, another thing I like to do with this cake to give a nice little nod to key lime pie is I'll take a couple of graham cracker crumbs and I'll press them like halfway up the side of the cake. It actually adds like a nice sweetness and a little bit of balance to the tartness of the frosting. So I really like it. It's just a little messy to do. I think this is like a fourth cup of crumbs that I usually end up using. Dust away those extra crumbs. Some kind of archeologist. All right, and the final thing I like to do with this cake, and this is completely optional, but I like to make some of my stabilized whipped cream and pipe it on top of the cake when you eat key lime pie, it's nice to have whipped cream with it. So you can skip this, but it really does add a nice final touch. I will make sure to link to that in the printable recipe. I just have a half batch of stabilized whipped cream and I have fitted this with the eight for eight piping tip. And then if you'd like, you can sprinkle a little more lime zest or a little bit of graham cracker crumbs on top of the whipped cream. Saved my lime from earlier, specifically for this purpose. All right, not waiting any longer. Let's go ahead and Cut into this cake. 
which a lot of you know, I always got really nervous cutting into my cakes. It's a big slice, no regrets. I never go far enough down, so I always leave a little bit of the middle behind. That could have been worse. That is how you make my current favorite cake, Key Lime Cake. If you try this one, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I really do always love hearing from you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. All right, let's get some whipped cream on here. That is a good cake. Mommy, I forgot to give you something. No! Just keep on going. Juice. I don't know why I just said juice. I was like gonna say G's and then the juice. Mm. Keep doing that. Just have a child back there.